How does the UCLA offense match up with the Utah Utes defense and what to make of Kyle Winningham's latest press conference on today's Locked On Utes? You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. My name is JT Wistiso, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. If this is your first time joining our show, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're on our way to two thousand subscribers, and thank you to all of you again who have continued to subscribe and support our show every single day. It means the world to me, and I can't thank you guys enough for the opportunity to continue to talk about what I love, and that is Utah football. And we're going to talk about Utah football and a lot also about UCLA football because the Utes officially kick off Pac-12 play this Saturday. It's going to be one heck of a last dance for the Pac-12, and Utah is a member of the Pac-12 with a just a really exciting schedule in terms of a college football fan and the great games that the Utes will have and just in general the Pac-12 will have. So I'm really excited to break down this game. Also in the second segment, uh, a new segment will debut called uh, Kyle's Translator. That's what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be some breaking down what I think some of Kyle Whittingham's quotes mean. Some of them are straightforward and, you know, even a translator can just translate straight up what someone said. And sometimes you need to dig deeper to find that hidden meaning that will be in the second segment. And then in the final segment, I'm going to talk about the advantage of just these tough non-conference games that Utah's played against, obviously not against Weber state, but Florida and Baylor, that'll be in the third segment. But first let's start off with talking about the Bruins. UCLA is currently three and zero right now. And, after their first win was 27 to 13 over Coastal Carolina, their second win was 35 to 10 over San Diego State, and then their third win was 59 to 7 over North Carolina Central University, I believe it is. It was, it was 59 to 7. Either way, so let's talk about this Bruins offense, right? Look, Chip Kelly, obviously one of, st- I still think he's one of the top 15, maybe even top 10. Steve probably is top 10 still. It, it'd be close, but top like one of the elite offensive minds in college football. His offenses always do a really good job. We know how elite that team was last season, that Bruins offense, DTR, Zach Charbonnet, what they were able to do, Jake Bobo as well, pretty strong, solid offensive line. That was a, a top 25 team, a legitimate one too, I think. This And this year's UCLA team, they're ranked 24th, I believe, after the latest rankings have, have come out, and that's where they kind of stayed at because, look, they earned that spot in the top 24 after the top 25 after their first win against Coastal Carolina. They deserved that, and they took care of business against two inferior opponents. They're going to stay there, of course, especially when other teams continue to lose. That's only going to continue to help this UCLA team. So um, they deserve their spot here, and I think they are a top 25 team. But I am curious and just interested to see how they're going to fare against Utah. And we'll talk about this a little little later on, too, because this is a huge jump in competition. And the best team they've played has been Coastal Carolina. And I think Coastal Carolina is a very good team. If you look at Coastal Carolina, actually, they've uh, won their two other games in pretty dominant fashion I've, outside of the loss, of course, to the to the Bruins in this one, but even the things that Coastal does well, this is they are now facing a top 15 Utah team, and everything that Coastal does well, Utah pretty much amplifies it, right? Like maybe the Coastal Coastal quarterback, like right now, in like an accuracy drill, maybe he would beat Nate Johnson. I but Nate Johnson's been pretty accurate. I think Kyle Whittingham said he's got like a top 50 QBR, and with the threat that Nate poses with his legs, it's close in accuracy between the quarterback they've played in Coastal and what Nate Johnson can do in accuracy terms. Then you factor in Nate's athleticism. It's like, okay, that's not even a question. We're going to take Nate Johnson there. So it's going to be a big challenge for this UCLA team to play the clearly the best team they've played so far. And this should be the best team Utah's played so far. But I mean, once again, we saw what Florida did, right? We saw that Florida went and uh, just beat Tennessee. So we'll see. But I think that the this like even Florida a couple weeks into the season, they're already improved from when we first saw them, right? And they were playing at home versus the, UC, the UCLA team that has to go on the road. And we know they struggle playing in Rice Eccles Stadium in the past, especially and especially when it's true freshman quarterbacks, which uh, this will be Dante Moore's first ever Pac-12 start. Um, Moore's gotten off to a pretty strong start. He didn't start the first game against Coastal Carolina. That was a mistake. As soon as he came in the game, you could see how dynamic he was. Seven for 12, 143, two touchdowns. Did have one interception where he got hit, just kind of threw it up, just a poor play. But since then, he's been sharp, right? Five touchdowns in his last two games. He's thrown 290 yards against San Diego State, 182 against North Carolina Central. And he hasn't even had that. He's thrown the ball 27 times against San Diego State, but outside of that. Look, Dante Moore's a freshman quarterback. He is extremely talented. And also, like, just how talented is he is? Off the top of my head, while I was watching Dante Moore, like I just saw right away, like his first throw he made 
or what the first third down throw it was after it came in from Ethan Garbers, you're like, oh yeah, this dude should have been the starter all along. Like he's different, like just the arm talent, um, even the ability, just the ability to make those throws under digress, uh, under digress, excuse me. Um, or D rest. Wow. JT <laughs> under duress, those kind of situations and, uh, arm ankles, all that kind of stuff. He's a little bit more of a modern quarterback, although he's not much of a runner. He's has like negative rushing yards, I think, or like very little rushing yards overall, but yeah, he's a very talented quarterback, but once again, hasn't played like an elite defense and nothing even close to what this Utah defense who right now is one of the 10 best in college football. And I think is going to stay there throughout the season because of the talent they have. So I am curious to see how Dante Moore will do. I think he's going to make some mistakes against Utah as any kind of freshman quarterback would playing in rice Uncle stadium, loud, loudest and most ruckus environment he will have played in so far. Um, yeah, I, I'm very, I think Dante Moore has the talent to play really well against Utah and do some nice things, but I'd be surprised if he just like didn't turn the ball over at all. I, I think he's probably going to throw an interception. This one's young, inexperienced quarterbacks. He threw his only interception this season being under pressure, right? That that's what Utah is going to do is they're going to pressure him too. But um, so yeah, Dante Moore's good. I it's not out of the realm of possibilities that like, and that's even sounds disrespectful, but like UCLA is capable of getting a win, especially if cam rising doesn't play right. Like they could go in and beat Utah. I think they're a good enough team and Dante Moore has shown enough flashes to me to put together the type of performance where you look back, like this would be the first legendary game in the career of Dante Moore. Like the first one we're like, wow, because right now, as far as I can remember, Dante Moore is like the, would be the favorite to go first overall in the, what would that be? The 2027 NFL draft, if I'm correct? No, probably 2026 NFL draft. So he'd probably be the favorite to go in the 2026 NFL draft, like be the first quarterback selected because he has that much talent. And I don't know who else there would be. But once again, also, it's hard for freshman quarterbacks to show that. And he's not a Trevor Lawrence level quarterback where I just don't expect him to go in and light up the Utes. But I think he has the potential to have that type of performance where I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibilities that he could. So I do like Dante more, but I think it's going to be a roller coaster game. He'll make some nice throws, but turn some ball over, turn the ball over, probably miss some throws too. But how about the rest of the UCLA offense? I think the running backs are, are pretty good. I did like what I've seen so far on the season from uh, Carson Steele, TJ Harden. I think both those guys are averaging eight yards a carry, both capable of breaking tackles. But I, I think they're very good backs, but I don't think they're great backs. I don't think they're the elite game changers. Once again, I just want to see it against the best before I can say it. that's what also makes this hard. Like, yes, they've looked good in both the games they've played this season, but I haven't seen these guys do it against a defense that to the level of Utah's caliber. So I think they're capable of making plays. Like if the offensive line executes run blocking wise, they'll be able to maximize yardage out of it. But I just, I don't know if they're going to be able to break like three tackles in a play and then break off a big run. I didn't see that out of them. Can they break a tackle? Yes. They're talented running backs. But once again, I just don't know if they're like game changers, like, elite best of the best running backs they're very good um i think the wide receivers are pretty good that might be the best unit on this offense they have multiple really explosive athletic receivers big body guys that uh with the way that utah defensive backs have at times gotten beat downfield i i think that could be a matchup where i mentioned the up and down game of dante moore he'll throw one up and then maybe zamaya vaughn comes away with it but he could also throw one up and their talented receivers could win it that's definitely something i could see so uh skill position players for them are pretty good the offensive line is solid but it did sputter at times versus coastal they miss blocks. They allowed pressure at times. And look, when they're clicking, they did run the ball well still overall. And they did give Dante more time to throw. How are they going to do against this Utah defense? That's the question, right? Like, I just want to see it against this level. And I think they'll, they're will they going to have successful drives. This should be UCLA should score. I don't it may, eh, It'd be hard to get to 20 still just because I'll do this Utah defense. But I'd be surprised if Utah held them under 15 because I do think this UCLA offense has talent, but I think there will be times run blocking wise where Utah's defensive front will win. I think Utah's defensive line overall has the advantage, but I do think there will be snaps where UCLA's offensive line generates the necessary movement up front. And I think they'll do a good job protecting Dante Moore. Although at times they did, I think there were a couple of plays. I saw blitz protection be an issue for them and uh, their running backs are not great in pass pro. So that's somewhere we know Utah can take advantage of. I definitely think there's an opportunity for Morgan Scali to get creative and, uh, and get some sacks and various things in there too. But overall, I think the UCLA offense is, is pretty good. It should be the best one the Utes have played so far this season. Uh, Dante Moore is the most talented quarterback they've played, and talented doesn't mean best necessarily because Graham Mertz probably had a, the best game, will probably play better overall than Dante Moore did. But Dante Moore, I, I think even right now, is capable of making throws that Graham Mertz can't make because of just how talented his arm is. And there's a reason he's a five-star quarterback as good as Graham Mertz was. And I think he was elite four-star 
he wasn't a five star. And you can see right away why Dante Moore, Moore earned the right to be a five star guy. So should be a fun one. But I do think the Utah defense will have an advantage just because freshman quarterback coming in, some questions along the offensive line still in this Utah defense just dialed in playing at home with that ruckus crowd. I think it'll lead to a couple turnovers for Utah. So I do like Utah's advantage against the Bruins offense, even if it's not a dominant advantage for Utah. But it's I it's not even a slight advantage. I would just still give Utah the advantage because of the freshman quarterback and questions along the offensive line, particularly for the O-line, the right side too. Saw some issues of throughout a couple of their games on the season. But uh, either way, that's the UCLA offense versus the Utah defense. On tomorrow's show, we'll be breaking down how I think the Utah offense will fare against the UCLA defense and what kind of problems potentially the UCLA defense could present to Utah. But uh, before we get to the, all that on tomorrow's show, we got a lot more to talk about on this show. We're going to do Kyle's translator, as I mentioned, breaking down Kyle Whittingham statements. And then at the end, got my a uh, little spiel I want to give to you guys on uh, Utah's tough schedule and how much it's going to help them entering the rest of the season. That is all coming up in one moment. But first, want to talk to you guys about our great friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a that there's a wide range of betting options, including the spread, player props, over unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. That's FanDuel.com slash L O C K E D O N, all caps, no spaces, to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. And also just kind of connecting it back to our last thing where I talked about like UCLA coming in, freshman quarterback playing on the road at Utah. That's why I'm going to favor Utah. Betting sites are favoring Utah as well. So if you guys think Utah is the advantage, I think last time I checked, Utah was favored by either four or six, but I'm pretty sure it was four. But if you guys like those numbers, head over there. Also a ton of great college football, NFL action. They got everything for you on FanDuel. So make sure you guys head over there. And uh, college football was really starting to kick in high gear. The slate of games in week four is incredible. I think this is the most ranked matchups we've had this earlier in the season since maybe even 2008, I want to say, so it's crazy. So uh, we want to get you guys as prepared for not just a fun Utah versus UCLA game, but there's just all the great games on college football. And that's why we want you guys to check out College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. So yes, you can find that show on the Locked On Utes channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can can delivering insightful and an analysis from our stable of locked on college hosts covering their teams every day find locked on college football kickoff live every friday from 11 a.m to 1 p.m eastern time on any locked on college youtube channel you won't want to miss it all righty coming back in this one let's play kyle's translator today so as i mentioned this is where i'm going to react to some of the quotes that kyle whittingham said kind of give my thoughts on them say what they mean because College coaches are not going to be totally transparent with us. That's that's the game. That's how this works out, right? When you're dealing with the media, Kyle Whittingham has repeatedly said, like, we could just look back this season already, right? Like, Kyle Whittingham talks about how Cam Rising, and I, look, Kyle Whittingham is a great coach. This is not a shot at Kyle Whittingham. This is the way college coaches work in college football. Look at any college football coach. They hide things from the media. They hold things back because it's for the betterment of their program. And we just, as outside observers, want to understand kind of, what what's going on really right and the, i understand why kyle winningham holds it back right he doesn't want other coaches and other teams to hear these particular things i i think that i've built up a a sub like getting you guys to listen each day I'm, I'm very proud of that and i appreciate that but i know like this show isn't at the level where like ucla people are not listening to this show every single day being like what's that G, what's that guy who podcasts every day going to say about utah like I, I they know that that it's not like i have all these sources in the know and everything i'm just someone who is passionate about Utah football and talks about it every day. So we can try to dissect and put on our kind of, you know, so, uh, magnifying glass, detective hats, all that kind of try to decipher what is really going on with the Utah football program. And uh, the point I was going to make just about like how coaches say things and they do something else. What did Kyle Whittingham say? Oh, Cam Rising will be a game time decision. He'll be warming up right before the game. And then we'll let you know that it, it leaks a day before the game that Bryson was going to be starting. And then Bryson even said like, Oh, I've known for like a week and a half. I was going to be starting like before Florida. So that's just the way the game is played. And I got no problem with that too. It just like, I don't think Kyle would have any problem with us trying to figure out what he's going to stay because we're fans and we're just invested in this program. So the first thing he talked about was uh, he thought the offense was methodical, not as not explosive versus Weber state. I think that's a really good word to use. I will say, I thought it was I, even the offense, just Nate in Nate Johnson's first start, like with so many guys out, I thought they were more explosive even than I thought they were going to be right. Like, 
Yes, there were a couple of deep shots. I, I thought the one to Money Parks, once again, like Money Parks had a deep completion if the guy didn't hold on to his arm. Uh, Landon King lost the one ball in the sun, it looked like. But near Maneer McLean made multiple explosive plays, and apparently he's uh, one of the guys that got banged up a little bit. Hopefully he can get out there and, and get healthy again because it feels like he's really starting to break out with his uh, his speed, something Kyle Whittingham in particular highlighted. So I thought methodical was a great way to describe the offense. I'm a little surprised he just said not as explosive with those players out once again and a, a quarterback starting for the first time ever, but... Overall, he said it was you know methodical, very good. What it needed to be against Weber did say the defense was outstanding. There's not much to, to, to transcribe or translate there. Utah's defense was outstanding. Um, also, cool to hear that Utah was top ten in punting. Um, forgive me, guys. I didn't I didn't know that one in my show prep. I must have missed that um, in all my stats. I'm trying to track that Utah was top ten in punting. But Jack Bomeister has been a huge success for this Utah team overall. I think that was what was it Utah's top. They're six in net average or something, and then just top 10 in punting overall. So great stuff. And uh, we know the kickoff unit had a little bit of issues um, in special teams. It, it, so it was great to see the punting game get going. And hopefully Cole Becker will be back this week. And a great job by one of my commentators uh, or someone who commented on the show um, that pointed out like, hey, the kicking or that Cole Becker, like one of the reasons we've seen the kickoff coverage not really be tested yet is because Cole Becker has been kicking it out of the end zone. It was a concern against Weber State a little bit, but Kyle Whittingham did say he thought the Weber State returner would be the best returner they faced all year long. There actually could be some validity to that, and I'm not just saying that because uh, of my ties to the Big Sky Conference a little bit, right? Like, let, let's look at what Abraham Williams, the kick returner, has done just throughout his career. He was an All-American kick returner and cornerback in 2022. He, he earned All-American honors and set FCS records with four 100-yard kickoff return touchdowns. Yeah, that might be the best. When you're sending records, once again, and set FCS records, then, yeah, you might be the best kick returner this team plays all year. So I don't. I think the Utah kickoff coverage will be fine. I think it was good that they had a little bit of a scare there, could get coached up and get it straight now, and I think they'll be much better going forward. Other things he talked about was uh, he just said that Nate Johnson thought his first stat start. He played well, handled it good, uh, no panic, ran 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 it well all four quarters too, and or ran the offense well for all qu four quarters. Totally agree with that. Think it's absolutely right, and I, I think that's what Kyle Whittingham meant by that too. I think he uh, he also went on to describe later, right, that they haven't opened the playbook. He's running about fifty percent of what Cam Rising would. That's what I would expect. Cam Rising has been a two year starter at the collegiate level and is now at three off seasons. And even longer than that, he's just been digesting college football. This is Nate Johnson's second year with the program now, and it's not even like he's he's gone through one spring. I can't remember if he was an early enrollee, but he's gone through one spring ball for sure, um, done the other stuff. He's been a part of the program for a little bit now, but he just hasn't been in college and around the Utah program as long as Cam Rising has. So, And just hasn't ran it in game as much too, so I think it makes sense that Utah has shrunk the playbook a little bit. And I think that's a good call, but it's, I agree. I thought Nate played really well. And, you know, Kyle Whittingham was asked how it, the offense changes with him. And he just said, look, you, of course, we're going to run the ball more with Nate because he's a better athlete in that regard than Cam Rising. And, uh, and the play action pass is going to be even more prevalent, he said, which I think the play action pass is always prevalent. And it's kind of prevalent for every college team just because of the bind it puts defense in. It's like, are they, it looks like they're going to hand it off. Oh, wait, it's actually a pass. We got to scramble and get back into coverage. That's where I think everyone runs play action always. But, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think Nate played really well overall. And I think I love the words he used that he didn't panic. I never really saw panic in Nate Johnson in that game. And I think that's something it's really encouraged about. He looked ready for the moment and I thought he really stepped up in it too. So I thought that was something that uh, was really good to see overall. And I totally agree with Coach Wood. I thought Nate played a very well first start. And I think he's going to play another one this week if he does have to start against UCLA. But, uh, Yes, Kyle Whittingham uh, did have a couple more th questions and was just had a couple more answers. I thought it'd be good to translate and give some thoughts on. So we are going to be doing that in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have great deals on last-minute tickets to their best and their best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the start over how to get tickets and start getting hyped over how much fun you'll have at the game. They have flash deals on last-minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets of every kind for any event and venue in your area. They have images of the seats so you know you're not getting ripped off, and they have their low price guaranteed, which is called the Game Time Guarantee, and it means you'll get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less because game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference so once again you don't have to go through the stress that some other ticketing sites have and you can get the image of your seat on top of the guarantee there's no reason not to go to game time so snag the tickets without the stress with game time you can download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. All caps, no spaces for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
All righty, a few more Coach Winningham comments, and then I want to talk about the the advantage of Utah playing a tough schedule. Um, he, Coach Winningham said, like, Dante Moore, he's going to be outstanding and is already really good. He even mentioned DTR, how DTR started out pretty good and then developed into the elite quarterback that he was. And I, I think it's easy to see that with Dante Moore. Like, he just does things right away where you're like, he's got the talent. Of, he's a five-star. Five stars, for the most part, look like five stars, like, early on. Like, they look like guys of that level. And I think most five stars, there's bus all over college with recruiting in general. But for the most part, I think five stars, um, especially early on, show the potential. And more showed even more potentially, shown the ability to be pretty good to start the season. And we'll see how that does against uh, elite defenses. Uh, one thing that was really unfortunate to hear is that uh, Brandon Rose has probably missed too much time to be in- impactful this season. But, I mean, with just it was really unfortunate. I think Brandon would have had a chance to get in potentially and, and do some things. I hate that that opportunity was taken away from him because of injury. Can't say I'm surprised with the level we've seen Nate Johnson play at now. Um, and just in general, Brandon getting back into practice, back into the groove and rhythm of everything. We still don't know how long he's going to be out for. I I think it makes sense that he's at the moment, even if he were to come back in a couple weeks, which based on Kyle's comment, Coach Witt's, Coach Witt's comment, it doesn't sound like he's coming back tomorrow. The way he made it sound, once again, just reacting to press conference stuff, right? He makes it sound like that's not going to be soon. And therefore, like Bryson Barnes will stay at QB3 for now. Nate's two. Cam should be one whenever he gets back healthy, right? So really disappointed for Brandon Rose and hoping he can get healthy and uh, still have an opportunity to compete for this job in the spring because he's earned the opportunity to compete for this job uh, with Isaac Wilson coming in with how good Nate's, Nate is. He was the guy who originally won it last year in the spring. So he gets the opportunity. I'm glad he's going to get the opportunity to get back in that race. It just is unfortunate. We don't get to see any of them this season too. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was Kyle Whittingham was act, asked about a UCLA. Like they might be holding some stuff back because they played their non-conference opponents. And, and you know, you can just win with that. I think potentially, I think there's a couple things they've held back, but the basis of what their offense is, isn't going to change, right? Like they're not going to have a crazy different, like run game, their pass game concepts. They'll do a couple things different, but at the end of the day, when you go into these tough atmospheres against a top 15 team on the road, you want to be playing your best. And the way to play your best is to run your stuff early in the season in games. So you can get live game reps of it learn what needs to be corrected and get stronger as the season goes on. I don't think they're going to be throwing out their radical, crazy different stuff than what they've already done on tape. Because once again, you want to be at your best against Utah. You don't want to be throwing just constantly new stuff out there that you've never ran before, because that's where you risk miscues because you haven't done it live in game. And as much as you can draw it up on the chalkboard and ran it successfully in practice, Game reps are completely different, and I think it really helps to have that live action and just running plays in general. You just get more comfortable running those plays, and that's why I think that the basis of this UCLA offense will be the same for what we've seen this season overall, but I'm sure they'll have a few wrinkles that Utah just has to be ready for, and I'm sure they got someone who's probably watching last year's UCLA game back to see, like, okay, was there anything schematically that they did? Like, that's kind of crazy that we could expect this year too because if I remember correctly, last year's win when Utah went and played at UCLA – and lost in that game. I think that was the like the first big win for UCLA. I want to say maybe they had a couple other ones, and I think they might have been a top twenty-five team before that. But that was their first like big win, so they might have saved a few things for Utah. But once again, nothing like schematically crazy different, in in my opinion, overall, because you want to be playing at your best against Utah. Uh, last thing I thought was really interesting that he mentioned was, uh, you know, you're just losing your strong foothold in the Pac-12 because in terms of the Southern California recruiting, because those schools are leaving, everyone's leaving the Pac-12, right? So all the California schools are not going to be playing in the Pac-12 anymore. So you won't devote as many recruiting assets to Southern California. But he said they're still going to put coaches there. They just won't put as many as they had in the past overall. And they're going to head east in terms of more recruiting. And he said our recruiting class kind of reflects that now. And I think that makes sense, right? You get more guys who want to stay and like, pl- you get a lot of guys who would like to stay and play close to home. I know I've had friends like when, from my high school football days where I've had some of my friends get recruited and they've wanted to stay like they have wanted to stay close to home and all those kind of things like that. So I think you would have a much easier time selling someone from Texas, like to go out to Utah, even though like Texas is farther away than say like a California is and the California kid to Utah, because the California kid would be like, man, I'm only playing like the home game is the only one that's close to home. Outside of that, all my road games are really far away versus the guys in Texas is like, okay, we got to travel to the Utah home games, but they'll be playing Baylor. They'll be playing Texas Tech. 
They'll be playing Oklahoma State, like all these other teams that are already prominently in and closer to Texas like that. So I think it makes sense. That is a great offseason conversation and something we're definitely going to dive into more. It's just how uh, the move to the Big 12 really changes the recruiting landscape for uh, for Utah. I think that'll be a, a fun discussion to have. But uh, before we get out of here, I do want to have one other fun discussion, or at least in my opinion, what's fun. You guys can let me know what you think of it in the comments. Um, just the advantages of, I think there's an advantage in playing a tough non-conference schedule is what I wanted to, to talk about at the end. Um, I was watching UCLA. I've watched all three of, I've watched really two of their games. I watched a little bit of North and I turned it off pretty quickly because the talent deficit was just so drastic. I was like, it's just hard to take anything, anything away from this one. Um, but for, for, as it pertains to UCLA, this is where it becomes interesting because I can't confidently say how good this UCLA team is. I think they're pretty good. I think they're going to end up being a top 30 team in college football this season. I, I think they're top 25, but I just, it's once again, it's hard. They have not played a legit, like even power five team. Utah has more impressive wins against Baylor and Florida, of course. And those two programs are better than anyone. Yes. Co beating coastal is good. But if you were like to lay out these games, like tell me which ones would be toughest Florida playing, having Florida come to you going to Baylor or having coastal come to you everyone would take like if you could say like which one would be the easiest of, of that one and coastal's not an easy game but they're the easiest of the options i just laid out so even though ucla still won that game they did look shaky at times but also that's where it's like okay it's week one how much of that is week one shaky in that regard versus how good you are against the best competition you've played so far this season and i think san diego state's a decent team but coastal's better than san diego state we know that so that's where with Utah, I don't have to do like for the UCLA. I, they have not played a really elite opponent. I don't know how good they are. And I don't think they've been handled. Yes, they had to make a quarterback swap because of the interception in the first game. But I don't think the adversity in terms of it, the crazy amount of injuries that Utah has been faced with and has continued to win. Utah's already just overcome more adversity in terms of opponents and in guys stepping up in place of injuries than UCLA has this season. So this Utah team, there's no question Utah's battle tested. They are ready for the gauntlet that is going to be the Pac-12 this season. UCLA is not battle tested yet. They were maybe battle tested once against Coastal. And even that, I just look, Coastal should probably be better than Arizona State this year in the Pac 12, I guess, maybe. And outside of that, maybe I maybe Cal, but I don't know. I thought Cal look, has looked okay so far this season. So, like, even that one, I'm like, I might favor Cal. If that was that Cal, if it was that Coastal, maybe we'd favor Coastal. But either way, like, I just, this is where I just don't know with UCLA. Everyone continues to be high on Utah despite the losses of camp, despite Cam not being there, despite Brant not being there, despite all the injuries, because Utah continue, had continued to play tough opponents and get wins, right? No, Baylor is not one of the best programs in college football right now, but it's tough to go into Waco and get a win. It really is. There's a reason Texas State, that was such a shocker, and they played so well that game overall. For Utah to have their injuries go down in that heat and the climate they're not familiar in and still come out of there with a win – was impressive and you just there's a lot of stuff about utah's wins and season so far that you can point to as very impressive you can't point to that yet for the bruins everything's on the table for them they very well could be but i feel a lot better about utah right now because who they've beaten without some of their best guys then i just don't know how ucla is going to look against the best of the best and that's why or even just like quality like power five teams because they haven't played a power five team yet so that's what's fun is we get to settle this all Saturday and we are just getting started breaking down Utah taking on UCLA to begin Pac-12 play. We'll be back tomorrow breaking down more of the press conference stuff from the players we'll get more quotes from and especially talking about what I expect to see from the UCLA defense against the Utah offense. That'll be on tomorrow's Locked on Utes. We'll see you then.